Hey guys, John with you here, and I don't know about you, but I am so happy this election is finally over. Talk about a waste of time and a waste of money. Where did we go with this? I don't know. But one thing that has resonated a lot is all the promises that the major political leaders have made with regards to Canadian housing. And with the Liberals, you have the promise that they want to ban blind bidding. So what is blind bidding for those of you who are uninitiated? It's simply the practice of offering a price to a home seller without knowing what other buyers are offering. Simple as that, you just don't know what the price is. Personally, as a realtor, I'm indifferent to it. I don't care either way. They wanna ban it, go ahead. If they wanna keep it, who cares? I really don't. Uh, why? <laughs> why would a realtor have this attitude? Well. To be quite honest, I find the uh, consumer advocates to be a little over the top. Um, I remember this one statement by one advocate. I, I wish I could dig it up. I can't find it now, but he or she said something along the lines of, with blind bidding, someone could find themselves paying as much as 200K over, over asking, which happens quite often. And just closing off that statement with, it's simply not fair. Well, let's look at that from another perspective, shall we? Um, if someone is offering $200,000 over an asking price, it's a conscious act. They know what they're doing. If something is selling for 500K and they're offering 700K, they know what they're doing. They're aware of that. They're just not aware of how much other people are bidding, but that's it. But if they have that extra 200K, they're merely using money they already have. So this brings me to a recent story by the CBC. I'll put a link to, uh, that story in the show notes. They chronicled something exactly along that. However, it had so little to do with blind bidding. The story is basically this. A woman wanted to buy a cottage, all right, a secondary uh, home, and she was prepared for a bidding war. She ended up paying $200,000 over asking for the cottage, only to find out later there were no other bids, absolutely no other bids. So she paid 200 k more for no reason whatsoever. Now, here's the thing. A good deal of the fault rests on her realtor, who is truly unscrupulous. And based on the evidence uh, you will see in the, the actual CBC video, I don't see how she won't be found guilty by Rico. Um, she was aware that there were no other offers made and urged that woman to make that extra bid so that she could garner herself an extra like payday. That's, that's not right. So that realtor, she's at fault. She's definitely at fault. And I really do hope that Rico finds her guilty and that her name gets dragged through the mud as she deserves to have it done to her. Uh, but bring us back to the lady who went ahead. Uh, clearly she was not informed. You as a home buyer have the right to get your realtor to check in on how many offers are registered. You can get that. You just can't get the prices, but you can see how many bids there are. You can also go with the knowledge that other buyers are aware of how many bids are out there, kind of do some general math and determine where you stand and what kind of a bid you did. So the realtor is unscrupulous, the woman is uninformed, and now that woman who paid 200,000 more than she needed to is feeling burned and she wants to ban blind bidding. So here is the CBC blaming blind bidding in that story, that's not the case. That's not the case at all. Blind bidding had nothing to do with what happened there. That was an unscrupulous piece of shit misleading her client. That's what the story is about. If you look at Australia and New Zealand, those two countries have open auctions. All the bidders can see exactly how much the other is paying. And guess what? They have the same prices over in those two countries that we do here. They have the same problem. You know, it, people who have deep pockets will keep bidding high, like, will keep placing high bids over asking, regardless of whether the bids are blind or out in the open like they do down in Australia. It won't change a thing. Money is money and money talks. So the Liberals are planning to pledge this. They were planning to enact a ban. It won't change anything. It will not bring prices back down. The prices that we see go up throughout the pandemic, they're starting to flatten. But that's the key point. They are flattening. They are not going back down. There's not a going back to normal. This is the new normal, sadly to say. So you have to make the best with it that you can. I mean, for you to wish that prices go back is like wishing a pickle back 
into a cucumber. It cannot happen. It will not happen. <laughs> so that is the liberal pledge to fix the housing crisis, or at least one of them. It's a really bad hill for them to die on. I'll tell you that much. If they truly want to make a change, one of the first steps I would do is to declare the housing crisis a national emergency. That would give the government more power to override municipal governments and force them to embrace new measures. Example, uh, you look at Owen Sound, which is where I live and where I trade. Tiny houses are still illegal here. If you were to declare the national emergency and you could override Owen Sound and force them to allow tiny homes, that would change a lot. If you go on YouTube, you can see people who can build tiny homes on their own, they have that capacity, they can build them for as little as twenty to $30,000. That is affordability. For those who are not quite inclined, like myself, I have no construction skills. Uh, tiny homes, pre-made, can be purchased from as little as 80000 right up to 100000 Once again, very affordable, and it gives people a foothold. But those are the types of things we have to change. You, another thing you want to change too is I saw that the liberals were also attacking flippers, which I take personal offense to. Have these, have these politicians ever stepped into a crack house? The walls are torn out, there's mold everywhere, mouse shit everywhere. There is so much to be done with these types of properties and yet people buy them, they go in, they put the time, they put the effort and then they create a home out of this former crack house that people are willing to pay good money for. How is that un an unscrupulous practice? I don't get it. What I do get and one thing that should change are people who buy homes and speculate. Like they don't do anything with them whatsoever. I have an example of that and I'll put that in the show notes too of someone who bought a home in the region. He bought it for a buck eighty, made no changes whatsoever, didn't even try to get the residents out. The residents, uh, there's two tenants. Those houses in this present, or those apartments in that house could fetch 1200 each a month. And right now, because of the rent controls, those people that are in there, they're getting about 1400 a month. So a thousand less than they could be. So he did not vacate the uh, tenants. He did not make any improvements whatsoever, bought the duplex for 180 and he's trying to flip it for 330. To my knowledge, he still hasn't succeeded in doing so and good for that. I'm really happy to hear that he's not succeeding. But that is a type of flipping that the liberals should actually go and attack. But when you put value into something, no. The government has to step back. So blind bidding, either which way, I'm telling you right now, it's not gonna change a thing. And the liberals, if they really want to make a change, find a better battle. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe, like the video, everything helps, and I'll catch you in the next one.